It's time for Deconversion Therapy, and I'm Karen. I'm Bonnie. This is the podcast and version. It, it is, because it's the only version, unless you purchased our book. Um, unless and you think that we are TikTok mavens. Karen that's right. is. So, speaking of that, last night I jumped on and did a live. That means... That you push buttons, and then people can just come listen to you embarrass yourself. So I did that, and it was good. Like, uh, we have a few people who now listen to us because of TikTok, but people were like, when is Bonnie going to be on live? (laughs) And I said, never. She will not be on it. (laughs) You can see Um, pictures of me on our newsletter uh, from when we was young'uns. Yeah, we got some. We got some new ones. We got some old new ones. They were you in new Bonnie's stash. <laughs> yeah, my stash Long. is pretty vast, and it's great how you haven't seen a lot of them. And there's another box under my bed of your wedding that I I don't have seen think... those. Really? No, I mean I saw my <laughs> wedding. Yeah, I saw so many pictures. <laughs> are these are these the ones where like? In the video we saw where okay, don't I, talk caught, about that. <laughs> I caught one of our church friends just signing the guest book. It just pans by. <laughs> he was not invited. <laughs> he just was like, and he was dressed really nice. Like, I am going to dress nice. I'm going down there. I'm going to get a was meal. An in- <laughs> yep. yep. So, yeah, there you go. But it was um, kind of like yeah. that in our youth group. Like, if you... If you weren't invited, you didn't realize you weren't wanted because you really weren't not wanted. It was just, well, they had a number. I'm sure they'd want me if I was, you know, like maybe two below the cutoff. Oh, yeah. No, this person would not have been in the top thousand, but not a bad person. Just just, would never have thought. But maybe he was like, I covered your two dollars one pizza night so this <laughs> that could have been we're gonna break even and your wedding was the night that one of our friends made out with another one of our friends who we never thought that would have happened so that was and times. one of them claims it happened while the other do not <laughs> does okay. not and that's a wedding for you there you go uh <laughs> Um, So back to the whole TikTok thing, tell people how you have to misspell a word to get around the button pushing um, angry Christians. Yeah, they're the worst. No. So a lot of people, definitely those who put agnostic atheist in there um, as hashtags, they get reported a lot and some lose, you know, their... They're licensed to drive on TikTok, but (laughs) I stopped doing that, but now for certain things, I misspell it. One, that's a marketing ploy, as we Mm. know, happened at our local Carvel in South Florida all the time, where he would misspell things on the sign because it gets you looking at the sign longer. I didn't know Um, that. Yeah. And it's a little marketing trick on TikTok. But I also just misspell like church or Christian sometimes or certain things. So they, the Christians don't come and just report because that happens all the time. Oh, that's actually what happened to that guy I was just talking about, Kevin Thornton who's really funny, he had to make a backup account, and he got reported the other night, and, you know, so people are just like that. Okay, so the reality of it is there are people who are thinking that this is their mission, and they're probably given pieces of paper at church, or maybe they are texted the instructions, okay, go on this media and do this search and report these people. This is, and they just feel they have to. But this so is my, probably they're getting directives from their youth leaders. I think they're just – no, these are usually – a lot of them can be older people too. And usually it's like, well, I'm a Christian. I like it that way. And I'm like, okay, Jan, like whatever their way. name is. 
And, you know, like, I don't care. This ain't for you. But. Oh, uh, so I don't care. This ain't for you is the exact opposite of what we're going to talk about today, which I don't, <laughs> I'm not ready to bust into that yet. But I just thought it was funny that you said that. My whole right. live and let live thing is <laughs> like kryptonite to these goofballs. I will say this, going back to your what you were saying about the cute little photos so people don't get confused. You only will see that if you sponsor us, which is our newsletter that we try and put out. And I know we're super busy, um, but... Uh, that comes out in the newsletter, and you can go to deconversiontherapy.com to do it. But in our last episode, where I wanted to call someone a dick, and you're like, don't do it, and then they responded. <laughs> Not the guy, but some of our listeners. Oh, no. And they said that they agreed with me, and obviously that's why I'm telling you. Because I would not have told you otherwise. <laughs> no, but then they're like, I dicks. go, I I like the book of Corinthians. And they were like, Corinthians. Oh, oh, oh. That's right. Okay. Okay, good. That's well, they want to hear they want to hear you be a foul mouthed young hooligan. <laughs> That's okay. That's it. They want to hear true emotions. And you know, they're descriptive words. That is one. That tells you all about him in one little droop, droop. I know. I um, guess I was afraid of somebody saying or reporting us. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good thing. Like on podcasts, they can't really do that. All right. Like then they I'll, can. Then I will call somebody a jackass. You do it. You I do will. it with all your might. <laughs> So we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we have a Facebook group, um, and, you know, who knows what will get invented this week. I was all into Clubhouse for a solid week uh, a few months ago, and now detest it, so haven't been on there. I don't even know. I guess it's still going. I don't hear anything about it. You know, there was an app that I thought was going to be fantastic and take off. What was that? Oops. Did you gong me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, My water bottle. And now it's been so long, I can't even remember what it was called, but it was some something owned or, uh, you know, in conjunction with Twitter. And if you were live, it would it would ping you and go, so-and-so is live. So all the tennis people, if they were watching practice, I'd be like, oh, my yeah. gosh, somebody's somebody's broadcasting live. And Periscope. I, Periscope. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, why, why is Periscope not awesome? Because everybody else there, came up with the live. I guess so. And then there was um, BJ Novak's Listly, which I never understood, but I'm like, BJ Novak, right. I'm signing up. <laughs> Ooh, wait a minute. Everyone just writes lists. My five favorite, you know, oh. Apple kinds of things. Uh -huh. um, so I, I never got that either. And then there's, hmm. yeah, they're coming out all the time. And I, I don't know. <laughs> but but I was on TikTok the other day. Mm -hmm. And what kept coming up is, I guess, uh, Justin Bieber just did a live and was on there all day because it didn't what? matter what time I got on there. <laughs> there he was playing guitar really badly, trying wow. to, yeah. He's one whose voice never changed into something new and better as he aged. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, well, like good, good news. He's still aging. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's is, hope. There's that's true. But like at a time when he was really precocious, yeah. now he's just a person, like yeah. musically. There's nothing, nothing special about it. Well, you know who used to go for a long time live too is Robbie Williams. And I don't know if I've stopped following him or if he just he doesn't blocked do you? it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in people. Are. Let's get into our subject matter today, Bonnie. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's uh, these people I discovered on TikTok, but I'm shocked how many people were like, "Oh yeah, they came on our campus in the '80s, '90s, 
whatever it is now. They have so, been around so long. Yes. I can't believe we've never heard of them. We should. This should have been episode number one of the podcast. How about we just keep doing them every episode? <laughs> no, because I can't stand them. I I can't either, but uh, there's, I got some, yeah. So let's get into it. Who are they? Why are they? Hmm. You go for it. All right, so you sent me my first introduction to this lady who, uh, you probably know her age, but she must be around 60. That's Correct. my guess. Correct, she's 63. Okay, so she's 63. Um She's got bangs and hair below her shoulder a little bit, and it's curly in the way that it's natural because it's not even, and you, of all people, have told before about oh, a partial right. perm. Cindy should, should, yeah. <laughs> should consider getting a partial perm to control <laughs> those scraggly-ass curls. And I feel like I am insulting her because she insults people left and right. This is their their gimmick. So it's Sister Cindy you introduced me to. And the first video I saw of her was of her with somebody else that is one of her, um, what do you call it when people's the same age? People's, what do you call it yeah. when people are the her same age? Her one friend. No. No, they're, they're her colleague. No, nope, there's another person. word. Uh her, um, her, not her compatriot, her, oh, okay. So comrade. Nope. It's all, we're yeah. almost there though. Okay. So the first video that you sent me was of sister Cindy and her contemporary who also is the same age group. And they're both in some shirt that is, you know, the print is backwards. Cause I guess they're doing that on video with their phone, right. with the backwards print, but it says, ho, no, mo. And so yeah. her whole gist is, I used to be a whore, but now I'm a ho no mo, and uh, uh yeah, <laughs> and they're smiling, and you can be a ho no mo too, and she does just these inflections, and yeah, and so she's married to brother Jed, so who, it's sister Cindy and brother Jed, right. And their last name is Smock, like a like, like a smock. What you wear um, to art class, right? So, brother Jed. So, I found out how they met and mm-hmm. uh, their love story and all that. I don't know how much you got into it because I was like, just watch some TikToks, and I'll do the I'll do the real research. Leave it to the real women. I but, heard some stuff about how they met, so you can start that, and then I'll. Add some of the bits that I heard her. Well, Brother Jed is always like, this is Brother Jed, the campus legend. (laughs) And I'm like, no, no, don't don't name yourself like that. For years he's been calling himself that? Yeah. So he gets, he and his wife go to college campuses and Mm -hmm. they spend, you know, five days a week, five hours a day on college campuses. They've been to all 50 states and they practice something called confrontational evangelism. Hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, we see those people. I would see them on the campus where I worked. Really? The ones with the, n- not these people, unless okay. I just didn't uh, yeah. put two and two together. <laughs> but I saw the ones that had the big signs that, you know, were like, no whoremongers, no <laughs> witches, no this and that. <laughs> Thanks. We saw those people. And would they just set up at, like, the speaker's corner of whatever campus they're going to? Yeah, yeah. So there's, like, a First Amendment area, and you you do have to get a permit. But, you know, like pretty much it's— Like, that's hard to get. <laughs> I know. It's pretty much open to anyone, but you can get kicked off if it's, like, this is being disruptive and this is going to head in a bad direction. So the people that were on our campus, uh, someone punched— the person because oh. they were just saying really terrible things um, mm-hmm. about women and uh, yeah. So As a the reminder, guy got punched in the face. The campus you're talking about is where you taught. The campus where right. we went to school together for the first two years of my college experience. 
I couldn't imagine we would have anything close to a First Amendment corner. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. There was, you know, we didn't have any of that. There was chapel. You're going to like had it. that chapel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Brother Jed, uh, he says that he and his company, they're called the Destroyers, are, quote, God's sewer workers. Daily, for half a century, they open the, quote, manholes and drop into the sewer tunnels where <laughs> liquid and solid waste slowly flows, <sighs> except when blockages interrupt the movement of the waste. Okay. So that's just so, a lot of visual feces type Unnecessary. Imagery. But that to me says that he thinks he is so above it all. Uh, definitely. So all his videos, he is the exact image of what used to be called a dandy, a <laughs> guy in near, almost a seersucker suit, but sort of that, like he could be singing barbershop if he wanted, just switch the hats out. <laughs> if he wanted. Um, <laughs> but we'll get into, yeah, his age when I talk about the marriage. But he's yeah, these very people have a long career. Yeah, which is baffling because I think that you figure way back when. Well, let's see. I can pretty much go and get off by yelling at people and get paid for it. Sign me up. <laughs> uh, true, and they the things they do are crazy. Did yeah. you see any video of them with the the people, like with students? Oh yeah, I've got I've got reports on videos to tell you about. Ooh, yeah. All right. Um, well, on the on their website, I'll go past this to just give an idea how much they really feel that what they're doing not only is right, but when they get mocked that that almost proves them right, that all the <laughs> pictures all over their website of the crowds are of the crowds mocking them, people <laughs> laughing at them. Is that true like, on their websites? Yes. Oh, so this picture I posted here is from their website. Wait, that you posted it, where? Oh, okay. On, yep. So there's, uh, <laughs> there's Pastor... Brother Jed in the middle, uh -huh. and then people have made their own signs to <laughs> sort of protest him. One says, that sweater vest is a sin. Nice. And someone said, I like masturbating. <laughs> and another one says, citation needed, because, yeah. I have to say I'm disappointed by the kid in the middle who doesn't love masturbating. <laughs> He just <laughs> likes it. He's okay. just, he's so, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they they have all their pictures will have, like, people laughing at them in the back, and mm -hmm. they don't care. They like that. Yeah, well, that's the same thing we were talking about a couple weeks ago. The more you get persecuted, the more you, you feel like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm doing it right. Yeah. Because yeah. they wouldn't say that because the world likes the world, but the world <laughs> hates a saint. You know what else the world hates? That sweater vest. <laughs> he really likes his sort of Aztec Indian stuff because he has like a jacket with fringe and all that, too. He well, loves his clothes, fairness. actually. What? He loves his clothes. He's got quite a few different kinds of fashion going on. His wife. He's probably not too so into the things of the world. Uh, but mm. then you see his wife's fashion choices and you go, well, he kind of gets a break. <laughs> because yeah. <laughs> That's why he can afford the clothes. It's a wash. Oh, and I saw a picture skirts. of them with their like, four kids or three or I don't know, but all in these matching uh, jumper dresses. Mm -hmm. Like, well, that is a nice way to save money is making your own jumper dresses uh, for your kids. Yep. I found like an older picture. They have five daughters and I oh, found sort of a recent-ish one. Mm -hmm. And the daughters are like physically beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and 
one or two have a bit of a look about them Mm -hmm. that makes me think that they might fly the coop, you know, sometime. Yeah. And you know what else you might be, I'm not, I'm not sure how much of <laughs> Wikipedia you read, but somebody followed them around and put out a reality show pilot based on their I family saw that. life. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. I just saw the one line that they were filmed for a pilot. Okay. So I found it on YouTube and it seemed like it was trying to focus on them as a family and all the little offshoots of how things would happen. He had somebody that he had taken under his wing and was training to take over the, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the company? Ministry. <laughs> the ministry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. The sewer business. <laughs> right. And then... You know, the daughter was rolling her eyes at the idea of trying to be hooked up with him. It looked like I couldn't watch it enough to say for sure. But they were all coming out of church going, that was a really great church service. Yeah, I felt like this and that. Do you want to come and have lunch with us? And um, so it just, it didn't, didn't seem have enough. real interesting, I think. Right, right. And and I can, I can see it now. They wanted to capitalize on... Uh, the controversy of the people, but they were like, well, let's make them human. And that is where they failed. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Just just concentrate on the controversy. So do you want me to tell you about some things I found from years ago? Yeah. Or do you want to do another bit first? No, what what you're saying about the show, I wonder if uh, another big reason they might not have gotten picked up is the language that they use and how they abuse the students. Because, you know, they pretty much just yell at people, telling them they're sluts and whores. And uh, it was really fun to hear 63-year-old Cindy on video <laughs> talk about wet ass pussy. Oh, so no. That, yes, she did. Yep. Well, she so. didn't have a wop when she was sliding down that banister because she was squeaking as she went along. <laughs> I it. saw. I'm like, could have gone a I lot don't. faster had she had a wop. <laughs> she... she <laughs> But oh, she slid she, um, down a banister like, hello. <laughs> yeah, they have a pretty nice house. I, I guess they're just getting their money from donations. There is something I signed you up for. It's called hospitality where they want to <laughs> stay with people, oh, have people <laughs> when they are at different campus sides. Oh, gosh. So, yeah. Good thing I don't live anywhere near a campus that uh, has a lot of heathens. <laughs> okay, so I came across a video from 1987. And if you scroll down, you'll see the lovely pictures of some of the students. Here's this guy, and they've all got members-only jackets, by the way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You see the kid with the blonde, long hair? Oh, yeah. They were panning through the crowd, and everyone was, like, shooting peace signs. So she's at USC, which I'm assuming is University of Southern California. I think so, too. Yes. It looked a little bit more like kids were not paying attention than maybe (laughs) they would have been if it was University of South Carolina. USC is a very good school, I thought. Yes, but they seemed a lot less interested than maybe kids in the South. Oh, because they're stoned. They're stoned. <laughs> I get it. Wink. Because they're wink. heathens in Los That's Angeles. Right. Gotcha. Okay, so so at the USC campus, Jed introduces her, and I find that he introduces her on a lot of these, and she just goes to town. I don't she find does. him as. <laughs> I don't find him as. Uh, um, gregarious? That's not the word I want, but um, as offensive? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think she is definitely, and on TikTok, like, she has way more followers, and people are like, we love you, we love you, come to this school, come to that. Now, of course, it's because they are like, oh, she's such a queen, you know, like, it's like this funny thing to them. Yeah. But she's definitely more theatrical. Yeah, theater um, for sure. So uh, even though he is, which means 
that it's a, she, the bar is very high for theatrics. <laughs> the bar is very high. So at USC, Jed introduces her and she starts in students. And it's this weird cadence. Yeah. Most of you are in big trouble. And she sounds like this super crazy hall monitor and repeats herself. <laughs> a lot of you are in big trouble. And um, so there's this man sitting on the edge of the fountain as she paces and she's yell speaking with her accent and um and he chimed in with a southern accent at one point and i'm thinking i wonder what the usc kids thought like are people who believe in jesus only from the south because they anytime do anytime <laughs> i do like a you know, I'm not getting vaccinated. I I do a southern right. one too, and I do speak southern. Well, I so. do. I, I speak southern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, <clears throat> so uh, let's see. So so she's in the middle of of this crowd, except no one's really close to her. So it's kind of funny. You're thinking like, oh, is she there alone doing this? So she's yelling at him. To um, oh, then she says, and all you rock and roll freaks, I must warn you when you get to hell with Janice Joplin, she won't be singing any of your favorite tunes from her album, Cheap Thrills. Thrills <laughs> is thrills. I got you. <laughs> Cheap Thrills. So then, uh, then they pan to, uh, at one point, Brother Jed telling men that on their wedding night, oh, no, that's a different video. Well, may as well just tell you, um, there was another video with Brother Jed telling men, I can't remember which campus this is, on their wedding night that um, the ladies, you better stay on your backs. And men, when you get huh? on top... On your wedding night, down there near the vagina, and he likes to use that word a lot, uh, down there near the vagina is another orifice, and you don't want to get the two confused. He said that, uh, like... Yeah. Oh, in, my God. In, in no complete... wonder people love to go hear them, and the students are like, that's the most sex talk they get. <laughs> right. And then this I took offense to. Um, at one oh, campus <laughs> now was this it? I took offense <laughs> <Right>? to. <laughs> he says, "I don't know how the local whorehouse stays in business when you sorority girls are giving it away for free." I That's saw that. That's not nice. That's I know. A big broad generalization. Exactly. Your whorehouse where you worked was <laughs> at a fast clip. Um, so wait, let's see. Okay. So, um, I put a picture on here of sister Cindy from like the mid eighties. Can you scroll down and see it? Yeah. And I see her. First of all, she always wears hats, which is, she does. you know, a kicky thing. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. I think hats were their thing. I don't know if that has anything to do with their weird religious stuff, but he wears hats, she wears hats. In all his videos, you see all his hats lined up Ew. behind him. All yeah. right. Well, he's obsessed with the material world, but that's okay. What was really funny before I go backwards is that I saw a video of Cindy, and she was, like, acting out. She loves to act out the devil, and the devil is going to come get you. So let me tell you about a story about a girl named Sally. So <laughs> what entertains me is how sort of juvenile they come at these college kids. They use these really like, you know, WAP and all these type of things. But then they use names like there was a girl named Sally, you know, and you're like, you're like something things missing. that they would have talked to us about in like maybe ninth grade, right? Or third, um, third. <laughs> but she talked about how Sally, you know, I don't know if she was hoeing it up, whatever. And then they're like, and you know what happened to her? 
she was put in bondage. And you hear the crowd (laughs) go wild. (laughs) Um, And, of course, she meant bondage like the devil has you in chains. And they were like, woo! You know. So backing up, these uh, people, what I liked in Wikipedia, it talked about Brother Jed and the wife, that they would go all over to different campuses, and it says they visit the northern campuses in the fall and spring and the southern ones in winter. And I just thought, (laughs) they're snowbirds. They are just planning this out for their own entertainment, but... It talks about how, you know, supposedly he was really wild in his day. He was a frat guy. He Mm -hmm. did. Not only was he a terrible alcoholic, he says in his own autobiography, but he graduated near the top of his class, which if you're writing. Self-reported. Exactly. Your own autobiography and you want it to sound like you are really wild yeah well there you go yet really smart but i think he does have a master's degree in like history now he's registered with the methodist church but nothing about anything says that he's a methodist he doesn't have a method (laughs) not at all uh, but some of the college newspapers, because they love when these people come around because they can write a bunch of stuff about them, He, they would get all the quotes, um, but he would look at people, and he looked at one black student with dreadlocks, and he's like, who are you, Bob Marley? Um. And he often shouts, a masturbator today is a homosexual tomorrow. Well. His assistants <laughs> carry all the signs against feminists and liberals. And yes, he is a Donald Trumpian. Um, they, you know, preach against all of the usual things that you think they're going to be preached against. But they do it so mockingly. And they keep talking to people about, you know, sex, like you were saying. It's I, I wouldn't want my daughter and their daughters are just standing around hearing all this stuff the whole time. But their, what their their um their level of of energy and um how extreme they are makes you think it's fake. Right. And they right. keep it, it up. They seem totally fake. So this is how they met. First of all, Jed got, he became a Christian because he was in Morocco and there was some man preaching on the street. And what a surprise. Later, he's like, I too will preach on the street. (laughs) So he gets saved. Then he comes back and he starts his crazy ass, you know, yelling at people on campuses. And there was one woman Young student, he said, in the crowd once. New And she was, like, always <laughs> dancing around, which she does now. I mean, she's mm-hmm. just one of those, like, skinny, jumpy ladies. Yep. You know? hmm And so they nicknamed her Disco Dancer or Disco <laughs> Girl. And she would come back the next day, and she would say she wasn't going to get baptize or become a Christian, but then she went up to Jed and was like, can I ask you out on a date? And he's like, you cannot, (laughs) but I will take you out to dinner, but go change out of your whorish clothes. (laughs) So she did. They went to dinner, and then she said, you talked about how you'd never been kissed. Would you like to be kissed? And he's like, by you? No, I (laughs) shall protect myself. And he dropped her off and all that. And then months later, whatever, she gets saved. She was really convicted. She joins his his romping troop of jesters. And the first time they sort of let her loose, she (laughs) sees... Women in bikinis and men next to the girls with bikinis, and it made the point of saying wearing cutoffs. Oh, and, <laughs> and so she went over and started calling them, you know, whores and all that. And they got all upset, 
and they were threatening to throw her in the water. Mm -hmm. And she kept going and going, and then three guys picked her up and threw her in the water. And so he went up to protect her or just yell at them more or to look at her coming out of the water. (laughs) Wait, does throwing her in the water count as her baptism? True. Well, definitely as persecution. Yeah, So, so she got points for that. Yeah, and so then they threw him in the water, I think. (laughs) Anyway, police were called. Uh, They've had the police called on them quite a few times. Yeah. But I found out recently in the last throes of our research, she is 63 and he's 78. Yeah. Which, again, you can say, oh, age is just a number. Yes, age is a number. (laughs) And that number (laughs) has some, you know, disparity to it that I'm not sure, but circumstances seem very interesting. Um, So he's 15 years older than she is. Right. And she was just in college. So let's pretend she was 20. Sure. 35? Disgusting. No. Um, Yeah. Well, did you know, and I found this out by watching some of the old TV shows with them on there, that they dated for four years. Did you know that? No. Yeah. They dated for four years, and he did not kiss her until they got married, which sent the audience of the Sally Jesse Raphael show (laughs) into hysterics, thinking, well, I wouldn't want to kiss you either. And they were all making their own jokes in the audience. Now, is this why he makes it a point to discuss which (laughs) hole would be the correct one? (laughs) On the wedding night. This sounds like a bit of it. (laughs) If he was the out-of-control frat guy that he says he was, that's probably how he knew what the sorority girls were giving away. And Uh, uh I suspect Well, I saw her. (laughs) Yeah. She did a a small little video on their website. She goes, I want to talk about breasts, women. Uh, Don't show your breasts to the frat boys. (laughs) <laughs> the breasts, and then she reads something from the Bible, and then she's like, so the breasts is for your husband's pleasure for whenever he wants. Here and we go. I just thought, this, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Nope. <laughs> so tell me about Sally Jesse Raphael. Okay, so by the way, back in the day, Sally Jesse Raphael was a radio show host, That's how I first came to know her, because my grandmother loved her. And then when she landed on television, my grandmother really loved her because she wore glasses with red acrylic frames. And that was splashy. (laughs) (laughs) So um, there was an old episode, and they're in three parts on YouTube. So it's uh, Sally had a panel up of people of varying religions. She had somebody from the Rationalist Society. and That would be me. Yeah. And so this guy's an atheist or an agnostic, and he is really shittily prepared to argue with Jed. I mean, (laughs) he says to Jed, well, do you really believe the Earth was created in four days? (laughs) And Jed's like, you got to be prepared more than that. The Earth was created in six days. And so the guy was like, okay, six days. And then Jed hops on to that answer that we've heard a million times before. Well, they're not literal days. Right. Like, okay. So my leap then is if the days are not literal, how come other things in the Bible are literal? I don't get it. Um, Why are things in the Bible taken so literally? So anyway, um, so it's Brother Jed up there and what's her head? Sister Mm. Cindy. She's sitting next to him. And by all accounts, everything that we've heard women should be with their man, she's not. She's a loud mouth. And she is acting like a bossy pants. And she's heckling people on the panel with her. 
and not letting them finish their sentence. At one point, this guy says, well, this is becoming a circus up here. And she goes, and you're the clown. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I am not thrilled. <laughs> thrilled. Um, so let's see. There was also a guy on the panel promoting the unbaptizing of people. Have you ever heard of that? There was a. No. Th- this was in the '80s when there was a big backlash to Jerry Falwell and his mm-hmm. downfall. Right. Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so people were getting unbaptized, and all it was was people being. Uh, you know, next to a priest or some, whatever this guy was, whatever his qualifications were. And they're saying, I, in in good, solid mind and health, whatever, you know, declare myself unbaptized. And they're like, yay. So there was nothing more than just a declaration. Um, But anyway, it was on a Sally Jesse panel. So there was the unbaptizing people. And um, I feel so bad because the real fact of it is we're never going to organize when people just don't care about something like, Oh yeah, I don't care about your religion. Oh, you want to organize with me? No, no, I don't. Right. No, (laughs) I'll be glad to go watch. Cause we don't, we don't hold the same, yeah. You know, opinions. Yeah. It's okay. Let's see. So she's pretty much a heckler and not submissive to her husband. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. So she and Jed are sitting there and just being the jerks on the panel, which of course is what they're there for. So Jed points to some guy in the audience who was getting ready to ask the question when Sally brought their microphone around. And he goes, he goes, oh, that guy's got an earring in his ear. And Cindy goes, I think he's a homo. Oh, God. And there was uh, <laughs> there was another group represented, Fundamentalists Anonymous, <laughs> and <laughs> they put all of the addresses on at the end of the show, and they just you know they just passed away, you know, like oh, Fundamentalists Anonymous, ah, they dissolved because you just can't organize people I like that. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the Sally Jesse show. When they couldn't get a word in edgewise because she's just heckling them with, uh, you know, well, you're going to hell. And then right. a, uh, one audience member got up and said, well, I'm Jewish. Do you think I'm going to hell? No, Jesus was a Jew. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Um, yeah. So they were dodging the basic answer. Like, yes, I do <laughs> right. think you're going to hell. You don't have to because he was a Jew, too. And you always have the chance to accept him. Um so at the end of Sally Jesse's show, the credits are about to roll, and she says, well, for you two, Jed and Cindy, I respect your religion and your beliefs, but I will never, ever have you back on my show because of the way you treated this audience. <laughs> and, of course, he starts with his mouth open, and they cut away. <laughs> Good. Uh, oh, gosh. And he, and, okay, so then you juxtapose that with the appearance that he made on another panel on the Phil Donahue show around the same time. Cindy was not on that panel. <laughs> and I want to know. Cindy's busy with getting her perm. Yeah. And she, uh, and he was not as verbal. I mean, yeah. every time he said something, he had the Bible in his hand and he threw it at the, you know, camera right, or at Phil. Right. Um, yeah. But uh, so those are the those are the TV appearances that I loved. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a picture, a reaction shot from a girl in the '80s with typical <laughs> '80s hair. Yes, I did that hairstyle myself, where you have it down, you have your bangs, but then on one side, sometimes too, you also <laughs> braid a bit. That's in the front, just not a the chunk thin in braid. Front of your ear. <laughs> Yep, not the thin braids that they do maybe now to look all cute and cool. No, a big, chunky, (laughs) dismembered braid that just (laughs) hangs like an appendage. Yep, and it reminded me of all the mornings one side of my hair wouldn't do right. So what did you do? You just braid that shit up. You stuck it up in a barrette with ribbons hanging off. Well, what I thoroughly enjoyed, there's one part where... I was reading about Jed talking about 
Cindy, who he married, and how they nicknamed her Disco Queen, he said because <laughs> she was fanatical about dancing, she'd completed both a 24, no, a 20 and a 30-hour dance-a-thon. Like, those were <laughs> the crazy <laughs> things she did. But he also said that when she sort of asked him out, and he was like, but, you know, I will take you, go home first, put on some modest clothes. And then he said, she was wearing a pair of tight Sassoon jeans. <laughs> I'm like, oh, how you know they're Sassoon, Mr. Jed, looking real close there. Do you remember uh-huh. the um, the um, little catch line, the catchphrase? Ooh la la, Sassoon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and it was confusing because there were Sassoon jeans and Sassoon shampoo. Shampoo, and you were like, "Which which is this?" Okay, so Cindy also has some of her own clothing wear. So <laughs> of course she has Ho No Mo, which is not only offensive but is racist and it's just disgusting. But she also, if you scroll down. <laughs> Has another line. Oh no! If you see these shirts for sale at twenty five, twenty four oh, no. ninety nine each, you oh, can no. read what those say on them. Oh, that's that's <laughs> that's stop the war on anuses. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and that's all it is. So all it <laughs> is is. Like the site, but she didn't explain what it was, so we just have to guess. I guess. I don't know if this is about homosexuality. Yes. I do not know if this is about <laughs> women and anal sex, but yes. <laughs> here's the thing you know, college kids, if they have the money, are like, I want one of those Stop the War on right. Anus shirts. <laughs> So that's where they're getting their money. <laughs> did you and did you on their website click on where she put "Be Mo Healthy"? Yes. Did you so click I was going to say yes. Yeah. Tell the Cindy, people. Tell the people what happens when you click on it. Well, from what I saw, Cindy also happens to sell Plexus supplements. <laughs> so she is a, a multi-level marketing woman. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that what you mean, that she sells yes. Plexus? Yes. yes. I mean, for it, it's like, <laughs> to me, like you sift through all this shit and all they really do is sell supplements. Right, right. I'm sure it's just left and right where she's selling stuff. So but, another but, okay, but what I'm saying is the whole supplement selling thing. Jim Baker sells supplements. Um, other people who are full of shit sell supplements. Yeah. It's just a strange thing to oh, you get to the bottom of it. Ma, ah. it's a pyramid scheme. Yeah, yeah. Like someone said the other day on their TikTok. Christianity is an MLM. So it all just goes together. So did you see the picture I put on here of Cindy? Her mouth is open. She's <laughs> There's a cross. And do you know what else she is holding? It's a long stick. Those and look like do you, menstrual pads. Correct. So she carries around a tampon tree. So she talks about how there's a verse in the Old Testament that says something, you know, if you disgrace the Lord or blaspheme or do this or that, you know, something that they say translates to being like minstrel rags. I don't know if that's (laughs) true, but at the same time, why, why do you focus on that verse? And so she wrote, quote, I went to work on the arts and crafts project. It's a mop handle with four bloody tampons and two bloody pads tied to a coat hanger, producing a mobile effect. (laughs) And so she really gets into it. And then she said, just as the bronze or the wooden idol 
in the old days was covered with expensive and attractive gold to make people bow down before idols, because that's what Satan loved to do. Satan makes sin look inviting. So, in her words, um, <laughs> she coats the the tampons and the pads with chocolate. And she uh, she said it may look good, smell good, taste good, and make Not you feel good <laughs> at first. But once you bite into it, you will be sorry. <laughs> you will gag, choke, throw up, and maybe even commit suicide, which I thought was a far, far. <laughs> that is a leap. <laughs> leap oh my that you god. Went to. So she got the police called on her because, of course, she is flinging around a pole (laughs) with what people think is bloody tampons. And she is yelling, saying these are bloody tampons and all that. Uh. And so people like, you know, this is an unsanitary situation. And, of course, she comes out and she waves it around in the cop's face. And I think I think they've been arrested a few times, and they really enjoy that. Um, they also really like when they join up with another pastor, which they've done a few times, and that pastor gets embarrassed when yeah. they start with their crap. Yeah. Like, they get into fights. <laughs> and it, you know, just ends up like this, you know, pastor dance battle that they have. Uh, And speaking of tampons, did you read the part, I think it was also in Wikipedia, how they said that uh, if you use tampons, that is not of the Lord or there's some kind of, there's some kind of stigma on using a tampon. Yeah. Well, a lot of people have thought that in the old Not in the old days, but I remember hearing lots of people wonder about that because it could, quote, make you not a virgin anymore. Not that that's true, (laughs) etc. The most most boring deflowering story. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I mean, that... They're against, you know, everything, of course, the drinking, the dancing. They've sort of formed their own belief system, obviously, because it doesn't tie in with much of anything. But they started their, you know, their own organization. And, uh, yeah, they're out at campuses all the time. And, in fact, I looked at her last TikTok, and she said— We just are headed to Nashville this weekend, which was this weekend, for the, let me see what it was, the The OA Festival. (laughs) Right. (laughs) The OAP. OAP. I don't remember, but it's Open Air Preachers Association. God thing and I'm like I really want to know where they met because uh, if it was inside I <laughs> would wouldn't protest count. <laughs> so they uh, all just take turns standing on a soapbox oh my god they must be downtown Nashville which is a rager party every night mm-hmm. more so now that the mask thing has sort of been lifted but they must be down there just yelling at all the the bachelorette parties, <laughs> saying, Ladies walking you're around. a whore, and <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't be sipping on that drink through a penis-shaped straw. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, since your birthday's coming up in seven months, <laughs> I am going to get you... Uh, a cameo with Brother Jed. So if people don't know what cameo is, it's a terrible idea that I don't like, but it is um, where usually B-list, you know, celebrities, you can 
purchase them saying hello personally. So if I got it for Bonnie, it would just be, you know, hey, Bonnie, this is Rafa Nadal. What happened in Barcelona? What happened in Barcelona? What Very happened funny. In Madrid? You, you know, I would much prefer Danny Bonaduce. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> oh my I suspect God. he would be on cameo and it troubles me. So so the cameo thing, the funniest one, I put it on my Jewish friends uh, wall on Facebook is someone had asked Smokey Robinson yes. to do a cameo. <laughs> yes. Have, I sent this to you. And so the guy posted, he said, my mom grew up on the same street in Detroit. So for Hanukkah, I wanted to reunite them on cameo. So Smokey Robinson <laughs> makes this video and I'm just going to play him saying happy Hanukkah. Hey, Marco, how you doing? Surprise, surprise. This is Smokey Robinson. I know you didn't expect to hear from me, but I was contacted by your sons, Jeff and Jarrah, and they wanted me. They told me that you used to live in Detroit across the street from me. And gosh, that's that's beautiful. Um, how are you doing again? <laughs> <laughs> nice talking to you again, I guess. But anyway, you're living in Vancouver now, and they wanted me to wish you happy Chinooka. <laughs> I have no idea what Chinooka is. But happy Chinooka, because they said so. Anyway, God bless you, babe, and enjoy Chinooka. Have a wonderful time. He can't just say it once. He has to commit to it. It's like, he's like, I'm going with it. I'm going all the way. Um, happy but, Chinooka. Yeah. So... so <laughs> So brother Jed is now on Cameo. Oh, that's so and his scary. thing is, hey, I'm on Cameo now, and do you know a guy who's a hoe? You can have me send him a message about how <laughs> he needs to stop having sex and all this stuff. So can you imagine paying money <laughs> to have that guy? Right. Talk to some other 19-year-old friend of yours <laughs> and tell them how sinful and they shouldn't be having sex and all that. Um, so it seems like they have some side gigs trying to get some money. And you know people are probably going to do it again as a joke. Yeah. So, and they get that. They're just going to keep raking in money from the Hono Mo shirts and yeah. uh, from this cameo. Well, I think it'd be funny for a father to send his son. Yeah. <laughs> Just send an anonymous. Uh, Just send it anonymously for Chinooka. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that all we have on these people? I think people? that's enough. <laughs> I know. I get so upset with people when they're such phonies because she was so mean to the other people on the panel in Sally Jesse Raphael's show. I mean, she is, she's off. Uh, there is a man, I don't know. Um, anyway. Although I know people who love to prove people wrong and um, and be joyous over the fact that they're right. So if somehow they could find a job where they do that, they'd be in, you know, a pig in mud. So this is the only one, though. She's a pig in There's... mud getting to just fucking yell at people. Right, and, right. And, and insult them. And they get to use all the curse words, all the mm -hmm. non-nice things they want. I know. And... Brother Jed still says he is sinless. So yeah. there's a big uh We are a big stupid for not issue. cashing in on this job. I know. <laughs> I think Bonnie and I need to go on the road. This is gonna be our new <laughs> thing. We just need to get our shit moving and uh <laughs> headed to uh, an old folks home near you. Were you your a wop, album lady? cheap? Three olds. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Don't Bye, have be a, good... a Cindy shit pile.
buy and follow us on all the things. And if you have time, look it up on the iTunes and give us a rating and a review. Please do so. Please. Because otherwise, we won't tell you which hole you're <laughs> Stop it. To when you lie. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> my ears. Mm-hmm.